what is your earliest netball memory? Uh, earliest netball memory is probably down in Geelong. Um, my mum, my sister and I all played at the same club, South Barwon, and um, you have to be up so early in the morning and it would be so cold and your hands would be numb and you'd be doing like finger exercises to make sure you could catch the ball. But I just think um, being in that environment with your mum, my mum was my coach and my sister would, was playing as well. It was just such a cool um, environment to be in. So that's probably some of my earliest and favourite memories because it's just like a family thing and um, you're all doing what you love. Yeah, um, and I guess... You and I have something in common. We are both um, one of two girls in our families. I've seen you describe your sister Maddie as role model, mentor, sidekick, um, hero, secret keeper, safety buddy, dance partner, trailblazer, my biggest inspiration, my sister, my best friend. How would you describe what it's like growing up with one sister to those who don't know what it's like? Oh, that's a great question. Um, and you've made me teary. Um, yeah, it's having a sister is the best thing ever. And I think being the younger sister, are you the younger one or the older one? Um, I'm the oldest by about two years. Okay. So um, I feel like being the younger one, you've just always got this person that you can go to and talk to. I mean, just yesterday I was having a rough day and I got home and I saw her. I burst into tears. She gave me a big hug and I felt better. Um, so it's just, it's the best having a sister and then being able to do what you both love um, together uh, and watching each other sort of achieve what you want to achieve and go through all the hard stuff, I'm sure you would understand. It's just so nice to see them doing well and you just want them to achieve everything that they want to achieve. So it's a really special bond. Um, and I mean, girls, we have a lot of girl best friends, but there is nothing like your relationship with your sister. She's my, as I've explained, she's my best friend. She's the person that I would do everything with. I'm going traveling with her at the end of the year. So they're just always there for you. And it's the best, best relationship you can have. I love being the younger sister though, because I don't know if I'm cut out to be the older one. <laughs> you wonder what it's like. Like if you're the youngest, you wonder what it's like to be the oldest. Like my, I guess I've got a few older cousins, but yeah, it's, um, but like at like you said, um, your sister is always like nothing can be more than like, or no one can be your best friend like she can. So it's like mm -hmm. like my friends at school, like I've got friends with my sister Emma. She's like my best friend, and absolutely we don't, we don't fight a lot too. Like some of my other friends have siblings who they argue a lot, but we're pretty close. I think yeah, and it's so special. It's nice that you say that, but I do believe, and we've spoken about this a bit that you end up playing a sort of different role if you're the older sister or the younger one. So Maddie's like very protective of me. She's the one that like um, helps me through it. Like if I'm stressed or something, I'll call her and she'll help me through it. And I feel like you're probably like that with Emma. Whereas the younger ones, they're just like, they look up to you so much and they just want to be exactly like you. And um, yeah, it's nice that you don't fight and you've got a good relationship. Cause I think that's very hard to come by sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got something cool in common, so that's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and I guess still speaking of siblings, Maddie was a few years ahead of you. I think she made the um an Australian squad when she was nineteen, which you would have made when um which would have made you about fifteen at the time. Were her achievements always an inspiration to you, or was there a part of you that wanted to do something else just completely different to kind of stand out? These are such um great questions because they are sort of what sort of shaped me to be who I am now um and I definitely went through my they sort of weren't the same answer the whole time through so I feel like I went through my netball career at the start and I just wanted to be so much like her I dyed my hair so I looked like her and I wanted to play like her and um, so as I sort of got into my late teens, I was like, oh, I'm just being compared to her so much. It's really hard for my to, for me to figure out who I am without being Maddie Brown's little sister. And so around that time was probably when I was like, no, nah, I don't want to be compared to her anymore. I don't want to do netball. I want to do something completely different so that we're not, you know, fighting for the same dream or I'm not completely following in her footsteps. And then I just, I just absolutely love netball and still the coolest thing is hopping on court with her. And I'm so glad that I stuck with it because that was an awesome experience in itself. So um, her achievements were always really inspiring to me, but I think 
yeah, there was a period of time there that I was like, oh, do I even want to do this? Because I just, I just want that to be maybe her thing and I'll just find something different. But um, netball, I, I was never going to give up netball, to be honest. I love it too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're two very talented sisters. <laughs> oh, thanks, Abby. <laughs> um, and speaking of talented, a lot of people would know that you're also an amazing singer or songwriter. I'm not going to ask you to sing a song or anything. <laughs> I would I well my keyboard if I can turn this around is actually just sitting right here so it's not plugged in but thank you for not asking me <laughs> put me on the spot <laughs> was there ever a plan to make that your career yeah so when I was saying that I wanted to give up on netball and um that was probably the path I wanted to take I went to uni and um, I actually didn't play netball seriously for that period of time while I was studying music because I just sort of thought oh this is what's going to be my thing and I want to make this my thing um then I quickly learned that you can kind of do both and you don't have to be just put in a box as like a netballer and you're just Kelsey the netballer so I think the coolest thing that I've been able to do is um have a bit of both worlds and sort of go with one if it's you know if I'm successful in one and I'm putting hard work into one then you know that's what I'm focusing on but then I've also got the other one that um I don't know sort of helps me relax and who knows what happens after netball if I want to pursue that or do anything in that space um but I think the most important thing is not just putting yourself in a box and being only a netballer um I love that I've got music that I can go to at any time as well yeah it's cool um <laughs> And here's a bit of a hard question, I guess. If you could do a song with any artist, who would it be? And what kind of music could you make? Oh, so there's this um, singer-songwriter. Her name is Leon, and I love all of her songs. And um, she's just incredible. And she writes music that I think if I was to write an album, I would want to write songs like her. So I'm going to say Leon. So everyone can go and look her up on Spotify and that's the kind of music that I want to sing. And I just like learning her songs and playing them. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say Leon. <laughs> I will say, I don't know who she is, but I'll have to look her up after this. Yeah, go look her up. She's probably a bit sad for you. Um, it's not, like, very upbeat stuff, but I've definitely listened to her songs during breakups or anything that's hard and had a good cry and um, she's made me feel better. So I like her stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and back to Maddie now, you actually got your first permanent netball contract back at the Vixens um, and it was to replace Maddie who had had a serious injury. Um, can you remember what that felt like, like on, like achieving your dreams but replacing your sister? Yeah, it was a crazy time, very bittersweet. And um, I'd sort of, I'd been a training partner at Vixens, I think for about four years and every single year they'd sort of said, you know, we're, we're not going to go with you for a full contract and you can be a training partner. So the coolest thing was that I'd been training with her throughout that entire year. Um, but yeah, I remember watching the TV and seeing it happen and seeing her fall down and I burst into tears like immediately because you kind of know and I think having done an ACL now, you know, you know exactly what's happening. And I remember calling my mum and I was like in tears and I was like, what's going on and whatever. And then at the same time, I sort of thought, oh my goodness, like this might be my actual opportunity to, you know, play and get an opportunity to get on court. So I would say it was very bittersweet. Um, but Maddie was amazing through the whole process. Not once was she bitter about you know, her missing out on the rest of the year. All she did was, you know, after every single game that I played or my debut, she was there talking me through it, telling me what I needed to do and how, I, you know, she was never um, jealous or bitter or sad that, yeah, she just wanted to help me. So I feel like having her, it's the weirdest way to start your netball career at the hands of your sister. Um, but it's a cool story to tell now, probably not for her. Um, but yeah, she, she was amazing through the whole process and I don't think I could have done it with anybody else. Yeah. A hard way to debut playing netball, I guess, but it, I guess it was worth it cause you're here now and. Definitely. And I mean, different experiences for both of us. I, I don't know where I would be if I didn't get that opportunity then. Um, so I've just sort of got to look at it like it was a cool thing to happen to me I guess a cool thing to happen to the family but um yeah Maddie as I said Maddie was just amazing through the whole thing yeah and do you think that having this a successful successful sister of years older made it easier for you to be recognized for your 
own talents, like you kind of said this a bit earlier, or do you think that it meant you had to prove yourself even more? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously shared the same last name, so people were going to always going to be like, oh, she plays a little bit like Maddie. Um, but I think the comparison was harder than it was easier um, in the sense that if I wasn't where she was at the same age, and I definitely wasn't, she, I think she debuted for the Kestrels at 18 and I still hadn't debuted for Vixens until I was 23. So I feel like during those four years, it was very much like, well, is Kelsey even going to be as good as Madison or is she even close to the talent that Maddie is. So I think the comparison was harder than it was easier. Um, and I think us moving for, or me moving from Vixens to Lightning really helped me sort of pave my own path and become my own player. Um, but yeah, the comparison was definitely really hard and I think made it a little bit harder um, to, to get there because, um, you know, they already had a Maddie Brown, like why did they need a second one? <laughs> And speaking of making a debut, I guess, you only get one chance to play your first game for Australia. What do you remember most about that first game for the Diamonds? Um, yeah, I remember being super nervous, but also really excited and just sort of standing there singing the national anthem thinking, how the hell am I here? Um, and then sort of once you get in the game, it's not... Not that it's not different, but you've, you're so hyper-focused on what you need to do and the job you need to do for your team that um, the rest of the world just sort of fades away and you're so focused on what you need to do. So I remember I remember receiving, I think, my first centre pass and thinking in my head, like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm playing for Australia. Like, here I am. Um, and then once the, I had amazing people around me and once the game sort of finished, it was nice to sort of celebrate and um get my number and sing the song with the team so I had a great debut experience it was really fun um but yeah I remember a lot about it I remember it like it was yesterday <laughs> um and not to be sad or anything but unfortunately you um missed the squad for the Commonwealth Games there was so much said on Twitter um and netball chat that you should you should have been there and I think you should have been there as well <laughs> thanks Abby <laughs> And every day, a lot of people like miss out on a job or fail a test or maybe don't get a promotion, um, but they don't have thousands of people in Australia, England and like New Zealand too, to all talking about it. What is it like having those kinds of decisions discussed about kind of in public? Yeah, I feel like when you become an elite netball, you don't understand how, just how many people are going to be discussing, you know, decisions that you make or... Um, you know, your setbacks, but I think it becomes sort of um, part and parcel of the job. It does not get easier and there's still, you know, embarrassment or sometimes I feel shame. Like if I have a bad game, it's like thousands of people are talking about how bad you were. Um, but I think if you can sort of remove that from they see the parts of you that are playing the game um, and they see you as a netballer and you've got a really strong um, view of yourself and that you're a lot more than what they might see or, or whatever. I think it's easier to sort of come to terms with so many people talking about it, but it definitely doesn't make any sort of setback easier. It's um, sometimes I still feel embarrassed or um, yeah, still feel all those normal emotions that other people would. Um, but I think I've just learned to deal with it over the time and I've got, amazing support I've got great family great sister great friends um and that makes it easier to get through it and sometimes sometimes the stuff that you read on Twitter is so nice and I also think if you flip it on its head you wouldn't know you know that there's thousands of, pe thousands of people out there that love you as a player as well so I think yeah. if you look at it in the other way yeah it's it's that's even nicer imagine that many people telling you you're great <laughs> it's pretty cool um, and this kind of leads to my next question. A report came out today from a survey of Super Netball players saying that 72% of players think that not enough is done for mental um, health and well-being. What would you like to see happen to improve that? Yeah, I think um, Netball Australia is working hard on getting people in our environment to um, work with the players and it's probably just about getting a little bit more funding and 
um, understanding of the requirements that are needed. But I think the wellbeing space is so important in netball. Um, the bigger the sport gets, the more um, fans we get, the more criticism you get, the more open people are to discussing the sport. Um, and I think what comes with that is the players obviously being becoming you know household names or being talked about a lot more. Um, so I think I think just getting you know really strong people within the netball space and within your club that you can trust implicitly and talk to and um, I know some clubs you know really have that at the moment and are putting well-being at the top. Um, but there's you can only be a happy you can only be a good player if you're a happy person and that's what I truly believe. So um, yeah, I think they'll end up doing more within clubs and just having people maybe even more of a full-time basis because at the moment they're just sort of part-time and um, even the time requirements of those people is so so hard with 10 players or 15 players including the training partners. So yeah, it's cool to see that they're um, thinking about doing more about it. Um, and I think the players would be really open to talking to more people and having more people on board with that. Yeah, your social media is really great because it combines like behind the scenes stuff of an athlete as well as your singing, as well as you singing songs, TikTok dances and just some like general life stuff. How much thought do you put into what kind of stuff you share with the world? Yeah, it's definitely something that has changed over time I was saying to someone the other day that when I was sort of 23 24 I definitely put everything out there and just allowed everyone into my world and I still feel like I'm quite an open book and I allow people into spaces that they probably normally wouldn't be um but I think as I've got a little bit older I've got smarter with you know what what I would like people to see and that there's parts of my life that need to probably be a little bit more private, but I still feel like I'm very open and I talk a lot, even in interviews, I talk a lot about who I am. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I, I went through a stage where I got a bit of like post anxiety where I'd like post a photo and be like, ah, what's everyone going to think about it? But I think I don't put too much thought into what I post now. I just sort of post what I feel like posting. Um, and, you know, like if my hair looks good on a day, then I'll post that. If I, you know, get a good photo of my friends or if I've done something really fun, like I want to post about things that are authentically fun and interesting to me. And that's if people want to follow along for the ride, that's great. But at the end of the day, it's sort of my social media is for me um, and you just get a little bit of an insight into who I am. So that's pretty much my motto around my so social media. Whatever I feel like doing, I post. <laughs> You're at the 2019 World Cup and the Diamonds lost the final by one goal. A silver medal is still amazing though. How And how long did it take for you to kind of get over that loss? I think I'm still getting over it four years later. Um, that was so hard. And I feel like at the time, you know, we're standing on the, pod on the silver podium crying and I remember thinking, gee, like Kelsey, be grateful that you've walked away with a silver medal. There's so many people across the world that would love to be in this position and you should stand here and be really proud of what you and your team have achieved. Um, but it still hurts so much. And even now with the girls going into the Com Games, I mean, the World Cup was the last major event and we don't have the silverware for it. So watching them prepare for the Com Games and talk about, you know, not having won the World Cup, it brings up the memories all the time. Um, and I think going into that tournament, I just wanted so badly to walk away as a gold medalist. Like I just wanted to win that tournament so, so much. So I'm not kidding. I think it's still, it still hurts now, but I think it took a good six months for me to like process it and be like, well, one amazing thing that I got to go to and still the best experience I've ever had in netball but shattering at the same time. <laughs> um, during teenage years, a lot of girls stop playing um, sport for various reasons. What do you think netball and just sport generally can do to reduce that? Yeah, that's a that is a tough question because I guess when I got to 17, I had amazing role models like Madison and um, my parents who were constantly pushing me to sort of stay with it. And I think when you get to 17, the commitment for your sport gets a lot higher and the time involvement gets greater. So it's hard for people to, you know, balance, balance sport and, um, and netball. So, uh, sorry, sport and school and, you know, being a 17 year old, so having a social life. 
Um, so I think maybe just, you know, teaching people how to have balance in their life and um, and maybe not making the requirements as as time consuming as they were when I was 17, because there was a lot of sacrifice and girls pretty much, you had to choose whether, you know, you wanted to be good at, if you had three sort of things like a social life, school and sport, you pretty much could only choose two. So I sacrificed a lot of stuff with my friends when I was growing up and they're the sacrifices that you have to make. But I think to keep people in the game, um, you know, maybe finding ways to make netball and their sport fit in amongst all of those other things um, might be a way to keep them in the game. Yeah. Um, and what's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Um, probably just you'll never regret being the hardest worker in the room. That That's pretty much how I've lived my life. <laughs> um, just if you work hard at something, it can be yours. And if you... Um, and even if it's not, and even if it doesn't go your way, you'll never regret having put in all of that energy and that hard work and um, you can walk away knowing that you gave it everything. So I think, you know, you'll never regret being the hardest person in the room is one of the best things that I got taught. Yeah. Um, and speaking of advice, um, what advice would you have for kids playing sport? Um, probably just enjoy it and find things that really drive you and make you passionate obviously you've just taken up netball and you clearly are starting to love it um but I think trialing heaps of different sports and picking it I, I did so many different sports when I was young my parents put me into everything I did a season of diving I did surf life saving and there were some things that I hated and some things that I absolutely loved and um I think having conversations with your parents about like yeah I really like this one and pursuing that if you love it you're going to want to put time and effort into it so I think finding the things that you're passionate about is the best advice for that one and last what do you hope that netball looks like in 10 years time um I thought I hope that every single person is getting paid a million dollars I know um I think it looks like um even more dynamic and fast than we are now and girls who can um, play netball purely as their job and don't have to supplement it with, you know, other incomes. Um, I hope grassroots and the pathways to every single club are really solid and we've got young girls coming through and wanting to stick with netball because the pathways are really solid. Um, and I think just more opportunities in Australia. I mean, at the moment, there's 80 spots in Australia. I think 21 of them are taken up by imports, which is great. I love having imports. So I don't think putting a cap on imports is what we need to do. But I think just having more and more teams means more opportunity for Australian netballers. So um, that's what I would like to see. And hopefully we can get there. Hopefully I'm, a, I'm you know, still around in a few years time and we're entering into that phase. I reckon the a million dollar target is possible. I mean, <laughs> how cool would that be? <laughs> In all women's sport and all sport, that would be pretty cool. Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> um, but that's all of my questions. Thanks so much for doing this. And I think no we're just good for time. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for having me, Abby, and keep doing what you're doing. You're a star. <laughs> <laughs>